Chamber, Ms. Hawkey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I remind members of my entry in the Register of Interest as I'm a mental health nurse who holds an honorary contract with NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. From listening to the other speakers in today's debate, it's clear that we all agree that action must be taken to address loneliness and social isolation. I'm sure you will agree, Presiding Officer, it was at points a difficult debate to listen to. Indeed, at times saddening to hear the different testimonies and experiences and the effect loneliness can have on our fellow Scots. As a mental health nurse of over 30 years, the devastating effect loneliness and social isolation can have on someone's health is indisputable, and the problem only seems to be becoming more prevalent. Research shows, as we've heard, that in terms of mortality, loneliness is more damaging than obesity, and that lacking social connections is as harmful to our health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. As society changes, thankfully, there is an increasing acknowledgement that loneliness and social isolation should be treated as a major public health issue, particularly for its effect on a person's mental health. It seems rather perverse that in an increasingly connected world that our human interactions are reducing. Nearly 20% of older adults in Scotland see technology as being a cause of loneliness, as it often replaces human contact. However, despite the fact loneliness is mostly associated with our elderly population, it permeates throughout the whole of our society and across all age groups. Commissioned by the Scottish Government and completed by NHS Scotland, research shows that 11% of adults in Scotland often feel lonely, whilst a significant minority of children are vulnerable to social isolation because of bullying or poor, poor, poor peer support. There's no escaping the fact that loneliness and social isolation can lead to depression, stress, anxiety and a lack of confidence, so it's vital that we're able to tackle the issue head on. I would like to thank the Mental Health Foundation for their assistance in preparing for this debate, and in particular Tony Giuliano, who I see has joined us today. And I fully agree with their assertion that this is a serious public health issue and that the Scottish Government's commitment to developing a strategy on this is a welcome step forward. The government's draft document is an essential platform to build on, so I repeat the calls that all stakeholders should participate in the consultation before it ends on the 30th of April. The publication of the draft strategy is a clear commitment from the Scottish Government that they are willing to show leadership to address the issue. However, we cannot disregard the central role that communities play too. Indeed, as the Minister for Social Security said in the consultation document, the biggest impact can only be delivered if we enable communities themselves to lead this work. In my constituency of Rutherglen, I have an inspiring example of a person who is at the forefront of, challenge, of the challenge in tackling loneliness and social isolation locally, and he is absolutely dedicated in bringing communities together. My constituent, Gordon McLean from Rutherglen, is a volunteer and the chairperson of the local organisation Grow73. Grow 73 is a community gardening group whose ethos is that by bringing people together to grow fruit, vegetables and plants, the whole community as, uh, the community as a whole will be able to grow too. Gordon works closely with his colleagues Lynn and Eugenie, whose dedication, passion and drive have been instrumental in shaping the person he is today. According to the research undertaken by NHS Scotland, 22% of people do not feel that they have a strong sense of belonging to their local community. So we all therefore have a responsibility to ensure that our communities are more connected and cohesive so that no one is left behind. And in that regard, each week Grow 73 holds a weekly Monday meet-up in Rutherglen, which is open to all and simply consists of small walks or planting throughout a local park. A dedicated number of people turn up every week, some of whom are retired, some are in work some unable to work, some come with their families, come with their children who are in school or even at nursery. Gordon is clear that their weekly event allows people to meet up with others for meaningful social interaction, which they may not have otherwise had the opportunity to experience. Recognising Gordon's commitment in tackling loneliness and social isolation, he was invited by the Eden Project to attend the launch of the Great Get Together campaign, which was set up in the memory of the late Joe Cox. Joe Cox's family and some friends came up with the initiative. And now in conjunction with the Eden Project's Big Lunch Project, a programme, they encourage communities across the UK to have lunch with their neighbours once a year in a simple act of community, friendship and fun. 
And following on from this example, Gordon and Grow 73 held such an event at Overton Park in Rutherglen, which was a remarkable success, drawing together people of all ages. Communities themselves are best placed to ensure people who may be at risk of becoming isolated or lonely can access the support they need. And I welcome the government's acknowledgement that communities should be the focal point in tackling the issue. Presiding officer, I take pride in the fact that the SNP Scottish Government will be one of the first countries in the world to develop a national strategy to address loneliness and isolation. However, what gives me even greater pride is seeing people like Gordon in our communities who are leading the way. Loneliness and social isolation should not remain a silent epidemic. So please speak out if you're needing help. Thank you.